Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a recent event and if you have any events, you can always tweet me and if it's interesting to me, I will of course make a video about it. So I moved one of my videos today so I could make this video and talk about it since it's kind of urgent. A store, a local game store was robbed and you know, it has to be said one of the best ways to deter these robbers or the people stealing from your local game store is to show a video of them and to give information about how they can go the police phone number as well as the store phone number running a store is incredibly difficult to do i helped one of my friends run a store a magic the gathering store slash warhammer he didn't take my advice and he spent a lot of money on Warhammer, which is expensive and takes a lot of store space without really selling. And then that business went under four times, but I am very familiar with the cost associated at distribution levels. So the store is named the Realm Games. They were robbed at 7 a.m. Here is a video. I will show you the actual video. Uh, that is the Manfield Police Department phone number as well as the Realm. So you can pause the video here if you know anything and call either of the two phone numbers listed. And at the end of the day, the best deterrent to this activity is to shame it and to sell, tell these people or people thinking of robbing your local game store, hey, you will be caught, there will be information online about it, and that is the end of that. Uh, currently, I help manage the accounting on a local game store in Houston. I do the inventory as well as the, I don't get paid, I volunteer. I volunteer to help my friends with his store, and then I volunteer to help a art gallery of 18 artists at a warehouse, uh, promoting as well as marketing. I don't take any money from it. I just enjoy art. I've always wanted to be an artist and I've always wanted to own a game store. So this is the next closest thing you can do is managing it. Actually, before, once when I left law school, I went to a top law school. I left law school and took a job as a comptroller, which is the level above head accountant at a large agency. It was a lot of fun and I learned a lot of stuff. But at the end of the day, I just volunteer now and use my skills that way. So as you will see, this guy is eager to get in pre-release weekend and all. You will be able to see some his face kind of. And these re the resolution of these videos obviously are not very high because they are security cam videos. But I do recommend if you own a store to buy security cameras because this happens a lot and magic game stores. Uh, locally, it's happened a few times in Houston, but it's not like too bad. It's not a profitable business. Owning a local game store, people do it because they love it. It's the same as the art gallery, and that's why I bring it up. Being an artist is not profitable for 95% of the artists. I imagine local game stores, the local game store my friend owns is not profitable. Uh, they are in the red every month, and if they can pl pay their employees, that is something that they consider a good month. That's a good month if you can pay, pay your employees. So having a local game store is more of something that you love to do, and if you want to turn what you are passionate about into a, into a life, that is difficult. And that should be supported by our community because where else are you going to play magic? You cannot play magic in Walmart. I, a long time ago, probably two years ago, I made a video saying that I will give something to someone who can prove to me via video or camera that they can have an FNM at a Walmart. I still have not. I got a lot of people who said they did it, but there's no proof. So I can say I own 1 million Liliana of the Veils, but there's no proof. So why, it's the internet, right? It is a very sad situation where uh, local game stores are 
you know, they're not making money. It's not like money's rolling in. I can tell you that 90% of the income a local game store gets is from 10% of its customer base. And that is true for uh, artists as well. You have customers who are willing to pay $40. Actually, I commissioned um, the 13-year-old to make me more tiger paintings, which he's working on. And uh, for my office, my new uh, office in downtown Houston. But 10% of your customer base have the money to spend and are willing to spend it to support the store. Uh, very similar to the store that I went in law school. I was the only one buying boxes. I was the only one buying cases. And whenever they needed new product, I would just buy whatever they had so they could get cash flow and then so they could buy the new set. Otherwise, they couldn't even buy the new set because I don't know if you, I mean, it's clear, it's probably clear to most of you that your game store is not this place where it's just money's flowing in and, you know, there's a spending it and, you know, this gold. I mean, a game store is incredibly difficult to operate. And when someone steals from you, when someone smashes, like they didn't just steal, they smashed the case, they were destructive. I, I mean, they intentionally destroyed cases, which cost a lot of money. It's not good. This happened during pre-release. You could see this guy taking as much as he can. He's got his car parked. If the video quality was a little bit better, you could actually see his license. And that's, he's obviously not a great, uh, this is very unprofessional. <laughs> not that they are professional. I mean, maybe they are professional people who steal magic cards at GPs, but the way they, they are doing it. And here you have the second guy. The fact that two of them came up with this concept is frightening because one of them should be like, no, this is a local game store. We shouldn't steal cards from them because this is our community and we're going to be caught eventually. So I'll back to my um, local game store story. So in Houston, I helped run my friend's store. I can tell you the margins are very tight. And the, the fact is a distributor is always wanting to sell you more than you can sell onto your customer. And they're always doing these marketing gimmicks and these, there used to be this gimmick where if you bought 12 boxes of a new set, you could get a future site box, which at the time was like $500 for $200. And my friend was all over that. He was like, oh man, I'm going to like make so much money from this future site box. I'm going to have an awesome draft. And the draft was awesome. No Tamagoyes were pulled, but it was an awesome draft nonetheless. But then he ate the, I mean, he just ate the cost. I don't remember what set it was, but he had to buy 12 additional. Uh, it was after the first run and then there was just more and you had to buy 12 boxes. And for every 12 boxes you could get of that new set that you bought, you would get this deal, quote unquote deal. And, you know, a lot of times when he buys older boxes and there's, it's the same price as eBay. Like there's no savings for him. The price of an older boxes at this distributor level in Houston is the same price as eBay. It's like, why would you just not, why would you even buy it? But he gets tricked and there's gimmicks and I have to go over why this is a gimmick and why this is not going to work financially and why he's not going to be able to move these Dragon Maze boxes ever and why you should not buy Dragon Maze at $80, you should not buy a 60 you should not buy a 70 you should not buy Dragon Maze at all because there's no value in it. And I don't, I don't see that changing for a long time. So when you have a local game store, and this is a different view of it, and it's supporting the community, people, I think in Etten Games, which is in Houston, Humble, um, two people got married at that game store. I, I was on their Facebook page and two people got married. That's how much they love the game store. And I think all the game people <laughs> were like, you know, people who played at Etten. Uh, it is a great place to make friends. There is no better place in my opinion if you're new to a place you can or you travel a lot you can go to any game store and feel kind of like home because you know some communities are a little different i uh, i always recommend if uh, i used to believe that you shouldn't drive to you should go to the closest game store because then you can play the most games regardless of the community regardless of the owner 
But as I get older and slightly wiser, I have come to the conclusion that you do have to care who the owner is and you do have to care who the community is. And if you had to drive 45 minutes for a pre-release in the middle of nowhere, that's what you have to do because you're going to have a way better time and you don't need to risk having a bad time, which defeats the whole purpose of, I mean, defeating the entire purpose of going to FNM or going to a pre-release is to have a good time. So in this video, you will see a side view. He is opening the, the door. I'm gonna give you a play-by-play -play description, of course. He's MTG line style. I know you guys like me reading off things, although I don't know how people can say I read off a chart because the chart doesn't have text on it. But here he goes and he's opening the door, opening the door, opening the door, and he is has opened the door. Now he's running, he's going behind the counter. He obviously has been in the store before given the fact that he goes almost directly, as you will soon see, to the case up in front, smashes the case and takes the cards out. So he's checking, he's checking uh, for cash, he's looking, so this happened 423, when was that? That was Sunday. Wow, right after pre-release. So imagine you're a store owner. You just had a great pre-release. The community's happy. Um, cat was a good set. I'm not saying that it was not a good set. It's designed beautifully, but it just doesn't have any cards that I particularly like power-wise. I do like the cards. I'm just waiting for them to get dirt cheap. So here he goes. He is robbing. He is robbing. And now he is... He, oh, I guess he's continuing to rob the store. And it is 7 a.m. Uh, and here he goes. Wow, he's spending a lot of time. He's taking his time. I don't know what is in that front exhibit, but it is facing the entry. So I'm pretty sure that it is the most valuable cards, right? Because toward the side, you can see these um, five by fives. And normally the five by fives are not going to be most expensive. So he's taking his good old time robbing his local community store because that's what douchebags do. I do hope that he gets caught. I will have the information slide at the end so you can pause the video and then you can read about the store. Oh, he's taking out cards. So I guess this whole time he was putting cards in the bag. And let's see. I know there is a second person because I saw the second person. I'm not sure what the second person is doing. Maybe he is parking the car. I don't see the car from this view, but from the previous view, you can almost see the car's license. If the video quality was like 1080, you could see the car's license, which would then help a lot. As for like whose fault is it? Like if you're a store owner and you lock your door, like I, I don't think you can conclude that someone's gonna break in and steal stuff from you. So imagine this is Sunday at 7 a.m. You have a pre-release left. Maybe you have the Sunday afternoon pre-release. You open the store. You feel awful and you can't even have your pre-release because are you really going to have it under these conditions? Probably not. Like it is just a horrible, horrible experience from the store owner's perspective. Huh, okay, here they come back. It is now 10 minutes later. This might be a different guy. He takes the entire... He knows exactly what he is going after. That might just be like 3 to $5 card. My local store has a 5x5 five five and it's just like bulk rares slash semi-valuable cards. Oh, now two of them come in and they are making... They are taking... What are they taking at this point? Oh, I guess they're taking these single cards and putting them in. No, that's, a, that's another 5x5 five five behind the counter, I guess and they continue to rob the store. Now, a lot of you might ask, okay, magic cards are expensive, but that doesn't mean that you need to rob the store. I mean, these people are, are deuce bags. They're robbing the store so they can sell magic cards. I don't want anyone in the comments to say, hey, they just want to play magic and magic's pricey. Then why do you need this many cards? You can just buy a simple deck. Um, I don't know at this point, do they come back? I'm guessing, no, oh, actually the guy's still here. He takes that entire display, whatever is in that. I don't know if that's magic cards or figures. It seems kind of a strange shape to be figures. He dumps it, I guess. 
Oh, he's not going to take the display. He's going to take what's in the display. Oh, no, he's going to take the display. And off he goes to the car. Oh, I guess the car is still parked right there. You can kind of see it. And the second person is now taking more magic cards. Yeah, he's taking singles at this point. Inventory is really difficult. Even if you have insurance money, having inventory is extremely difficult to get. Oh, now he's kicking stuff. And he smashes that for no reason. Maybe to get a few figures or a few more cards. So that's just, you know, he did not really need to smash the whole thing. And now he's going to kick the, this is where it gets really ridiculous. After many attempts of kicking, he finally breaks the case. And now he's going after singles. Maybe he left some blood at the scene. I don't know. He, there's a lot of glass, shattered glass. His DNA is probably all over the place. Like maybe his fingerprint on the glass when he shoved it down is on there. So at the end of the day, very sad. And if you have any information, uh, you can contact the Facebook below. These are the type of people to not, I guarantee you they're trying to move the product today. That they're not going to sit on it for 20 months and send it to Card Kingdom, which is what happened. That's how they, uh, in Austin, Dragon's Lair, or no, Pat's Game, sorry, Pat's Games, they caught the person because he was trying to sell very unique cards to Card Kingdom. And then they got him. In this case, I hopefully the store owner has reported what has been stolen and the community as a whole can figure out and contact other stores like Card Kingdom. Like, um, and you know, I get Card Kingdom props for that because they could easily say, okay, just sell to me cheap. And they could like easily not ask questions. What they did was they asked questions, they took a risk, they purchased it, they confirmed it was the stolen cards and then they gave it back. I get, uh, let me make an emphasis on this. Even if you got 100% of the insurance money on this, you would still be out the cards. Getting cards is very hard. And if you're out the cards, you're out the ability to grow your store. So when people say, oh, insurance will cover this. No, insurance is not going to cover the expected growth of your store from people coming in looking for singles. Oh, you have the single. That's a good experience. When I go to my local game store and I can find the fourth monastery mentor I need for my EDH deck, or not my EDH deck, my vintage deck. I, I, I don't tell people I play vintage, but I'm trying to. I have proxied the Power 9 and the, um, what was it? Uh, Avatar, the last airbender. So I have proxies of those. It's very beautiful. One day I'll show you a binder of the artwork I have that I've commissioned. So anyway, uh, back to my point. Really devastating and something that if you know anything about this, or at the very least, make it very difficult for them to sell to use. Contact your local game stores. Contact anyone who might be able to help. It is important that we make an example of these people who rob the stores because your store could be robbed. And the only thing preventing that is really the fact that they will be caught. If you make sure that there is a very high percentage chance that you will be caught because our community comes together, just like what Card Kingdom did, to uh, with Pat's games, then you will deter this from happening because they they will they will maybe do easier crimes. I don't know what's easier a crime, but uh, anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.